Welcome back. In the last video we talked about arteries, capillaries and veins and what kind of function and structure they had. In this video we're going to cover the next stop point which is similar. It's all about the chemical composition of blood. I'll read the actual stop point. It says describe the main changes in the chemical composition of the blood as it moves around the body and identify tissues at which these changes occur. So there's two parts. This First we have to describe the main changes in the chemical composition. So what happens in terms of the chemical composition as blood moves around the body. And the second part was we have to identify the tissues at which these changes occur. Before we start, I'll give a quick analogy of what you can, what you can compare our body to and these chemicals that float around in our body as well. So what I have here is I have, you can imagine a imaginary city. And what kind of things or what kind of substances we need to, to keep that city going? First, obviously, because we all need food, we have a farm. And this farm might be somewhere in the bush or not in the city itself. And this farm can be, can be compared to a small intestine because a small intestine also helps deliver us food. So we have a farm and our body has a small intestine, which gets all the food from. Now, we also have something called garbage disposal. Obviously, we, we all produce garbage and we have to get rid of that. And the garbage disposal we can, can be compared to the kidneys because the kidneys help us filter out all the bad stuff. So they help us get rid of waste, same as the garbage disposal does. And we also have a post office. The post office delivers us messages, and that can be com compared to our glands, because they produce hormones. So they produce hormones. These hormones are really important because they deliver messages to cells. For example, aldosterone tells it to reabsorb salt, ADH, ADH reabsorbs water, and these are all hormones which tell the actual cells what to do. That's like the post office. So post office are glands. And we have things like dams. Obviously, dams help us provide water, just like a large intestine in our body. Helps us to make sure we have that really important life-sustaining nutrient, which is water. And also the lungs, they don't deliver us water, but they deliver us oxygen, which is also really important. Then we've got our supermarket, and supermarket can, can be compared to our liver, because here all the different nutrients come, and they get repackaged, and then bought by, by in this case, for supermarkets by our cells, whereas in the in the actual body, it's cells that need the stuff that the liver makes. So the houses can be compared to cells. That's where we live, and that's where we need our food as well as we eat most of our food. And then we have the petrol station, which can be compared to our heart. The only function of a heart is to make sure every all the blood keeps going, and the petrol station makes sure that all the cars have enough fuel to move around. Now, what do we need to actually make sure that all this is connected? We obviously need to have blood vessels. And you can imagine we have these thick blood vessels. In this case, we go from the farm to close to the supermarket using an artery in red. Same with a dam. Again, obviously, usually it's a pipe, but we can just imagine it's driven on the road. Take this artery and drive close to the supermarket. For that the post office might be somewhere outside of the city, and we, we use an artery to get to the city because arteries move away from the heart and towards the, the places that stuff is needed. Same with the garbage disposal; They're usually not in the city, so it might be somewhere out, outside the city. The kidneys are also also the actual cells, and that is again an artery which delivers it close by. And then once they deliver their stuff. They take a vein back. They take a vein back to wherever they came from. Just like in our body, we have veins which deliver things back to the heart. They still need to have something which delivers it actually to the spot itself, so the to the location where it's needed. And those were the arch, the actual capillaries. So these small ones are the capillaries, and they connect everything in the city itself. So they make sure that, that everything is connected and everything can get the life-sustaining nutrients they need. All right, so we have our veins, our arteries, our capillaries, and these different organs, and they all function together to make sure that every single part of our body is supplied with all the nutrients and that the waste is also removed as well. So that's what I'll talk about in this top point. So I'll go through this here step by step. So describe the main changes. We'll go start at the heart. So we start at the heart, and blood leaves the heart and goes into an artery. A for way, so blood moves away from the, from the heart. Now it can go, it'll go two ways. It'll go up and it will go down. When it goes up, it's going to get towards the head. 
And obviously, in, at our head is our brain, and the brain itself is made full of these neurons. These neurons here, and neurons are the tissue of our brain. And what happens in our neurons? In our neurons, we have glucose, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. What happens with glucose and oxygen is they leave the actual heart. They leave the heart, or not, they leave the actual blood, and go into the neuron. Whereas carbon dioxide leaves the neuron because it's produced in cellular respiration and goes into the blood. So here this is the changes. We're describing the changes. We have a decrease in glucose because glucose and oxygen is leaving the blood and going into the neuron. Whereas we have an increase in carbon dioxide in our blood because that's being it's a waste product and it's going to be delivered out of it. Uh, Again, the, the, when we follow the heart, the blood itself, it goes down, 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 and it's going to go branch off in these different areas. So first, it's going to go into the small intestine, and this here is the small intestine right here. And what happens to the small intestine is we have glucose amino acid lipids. These are the products of digestion, and they're all going to be absorbed into our actual blood. So here, they go from our small intestine, and they go into our blood. So we have glucose amino acids and lipids, they will increase at the small intestine because they've been reabsorbed, they've been absorbed into the blood itself. Now from there, they will move and they move towards the next part. So if you can follow here, this was a small intestine, it goes through these capillaries of the small intestine and now it goes towards the liver, which is this here right here. So here we have absorbed glucose amino acids and lipids and they will actually be incorporated. So the liver itself was like the supermarket. It takes all that those raw materials and puts it and sells it. So it will actually change it to something else. So it gets absorbed from our blood into the liver cell. So amino acids, glucose, and lipids will decrease at the liver tissue because they've gone into the liver. Whereas urea, which was a nitrogenous waste product, is produced at the liver and will actually leave the liver and go into the blood. So urea increases in the blood and it passes the liver, whereas the glucose amino acids and lipids decrease because they've gone into the actual liver. Now, if we follow down here, we go towards the legs. Legs is also tissue, so they do all the cellular respiration. And cellular respiration, if you remember, requires glucose and oxygen and produces carbon dioxide. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a decrease because we're going to have here yellow and oxygen, blue and blue and yellow is glucose and oxygen. They're going to go into the cells, and then you're going to have carbon dioxide uh, going from the cell into the blood. So at the actual leg tissue, we're going to have an increase in carbon dioxide because that gets produced as a waste product and gets moved into the blood, whereas we have a decrease in glucose. A decrease in oxygen because it's not needed. Um, it's needed by the cells to move from the actual blood into the cells. The next part was at the kidneys. So here, blood moves through the arteries to the capillaries of the kidney. And remember, kidney was all about nephrons. So here, this is the kidney, nephron tissue. And here we have urea, and urea was a waste product which we want to get rid of by you putting it into the kidney itself. So here it leaves the blood and it goes into the kidney. So urea decreases at the kidney because it's moved from the actual blood into the kidney. Now last we have what happens at the alveoli. And remember what happens at the so blood itself here it all goes, so it collects at these veins and gets delivered back to the heart. From the kidney, from the liver, from the head as well. All of these parts will get the blood back. And it will get pumped towards the right, first the right heart, the side of the heart. And from there, again, it's going to get pumped to the lungs. It's going to get pumped to the lungs. For first, it's going to go back towards the heart. From the heart, it's going to get pumped to the lungs. What happens to the lungs? We have the lungs, we have carbon dioxide in our blood because of cellular respiration. This was the waste product. And we also have, in our lungs, we obviously have oxygen because that's what we get from breathing in. But what will happen is the carbon dioxide will leave our actual lungs, uh, sorry, will leave our actual blood and go into the lungs. 
So all the carbon dioxide leaves the blood and goes into the lungs, whereas oxygen, which we've breathed in, goes from our lungs into the blood. So we have a decrease in carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide leaves the blood and goes into the actual lungs, and increasing oxygen because oxygen is needed and goes from our lungs into our blood. So that was described, the main changes. These were the main changes. And identified tissue. So if I'll go for the tissues. At the neuron, so the, the brain tissue, we have a decrease in glucose, a decrease in oxygen, and an increase in carbon dioxide because of uh, cellular respiration. At our small intestine tissue, we have an increase in glucose, amino acids, and lipids because they all get moved from our small intestine into blood. At the liver tissue, we have a decrease in glucose, amino acids, and lipids because it moves from the blood into the liver cells. And we have an increase in urea because urea moves from our liver cells, gets produced there, into our blood. Now, at our leg tissue, we had a decrease in glucose and oxygen, an increase in, in CO2 and carbon dioxide because that's cellular respiration. So the cells need glucose and oxygen, so it goes that way. But they don't need carbon dioxide, so I put a, dump it into the blood. At the actual kidneys, we have a decrease in, in urea because get, urea gets produced at the liver, but removed at the actual nephrons. So it decreases from the blood because it's moved into the nephrons. And at the lungs, so the alveoli, we're the lung tissue. At the lungs, we have a decrease in carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is a waste product. And we have exhale it out, so we move it from the blood to the alveoli. Whereas oxygen is increased because it moves from the alveoli into our blood. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.